We are indeed all very excited to be here tonight to officially present the 2019 Royal Court to see just who has been selected as the 101st Rose Queen. Pasadena will always hold a special place in my heart. Pasadena has been good to us. Give Pasadena a round of applause. It is now my pleasure to introduce the president of the 2019 Tournament of Roses. Please welcome my dear fraternity brother, Gerald Freeney. I bring the theme with me proudly because I am so moved by how it applies to everyone we meet, the melody of life. Thank you. There isn't a soul on earth who isn't touched by music. Music crosses all bridges and borders and cultures to connect us all. And the power of music and its ability to heal and unite is really cared for by our youth. It is our children who take our traditions and keep them alive. No matter where they are in the world, and that spirit is reflected here tonight in these seven young ladies who make up the 2019 Royal Court. It's time now to meet seven wonderful, brilliant, and accomplished young ladies. Now, I had a chance to meet them earlier and try to learn their names pat. So if I make a mistake, know that it is one of the head and not the heart, all right? I have a last name like Shabal. nobody gets that right. All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Princess Helen Rossi. Now in rehearsal, I did questions that were easy. Do you remember the questions? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite color? None of that now. <laughs> easy questions off the table. Here we go, you ready? This is for the bonus round. Here we go. I heard that you are not only a Girl Scout, but also received a Girl Scout Gold Award for writing and illustrating a storybook for children with arthritis. Can you tell me about that, please? So at a young age, I was diagnosed with juvenile arthritis which is an autoimmune disease that leaves the joints in my body painful, red, and swollen. And I have learned over the years that the best way to cope with your disease is to help others like you. So for my Girl Scout Gold Award project, and they're here today, the Girl Scouts. <laughs> I worked with the Arthritis Foundation to create a cute little storybook with illustrations and rhymes to help kids understand their disease a little bit better. That's it, huh? <laughs> yeah, that teases. That's, that's incredible, seriously. Princess Ashley Hackett. Word on the street is that you are a die-hard USC fan. How did you get to be such a Trojans fan? How did you know? Actually, this is a funny story. I became a Trojan fan strictly because my brother was a Bruin fan. Uh. Just to get on his nerves. <laughs> and now it's my dream school. I suspect you have a good chance of getting in. <laughs> Hope so. Tell us more about your praise dancing. Okay, well, praise dance is a form of worship that I do in my church in order to express my compassion and my gratitude towards the Lord. And actually in biblical times, dancing was encouraged during celebrations and worship in order to, for people to give their honor to God and give their thanks. That's a great answer. Princess Rucha Kadam. Hello. Hello. You look amazing. Thank you, you do too. Uh, well, I was fishing, so I'm glad you noticed. <laughs> Tell us more about Hackademia. I had to say it twice because I had to make sure that I <laughs> emphasize Hackademia. Hack, hack All right. <laughs> of course. Um, Hackademia is Southern California's first ever high school hackathon. Uh, a hackathon is a coding competition that's similar to a science fair, except you build your project there with the help of mentors and sponsors. So I actually created this event with the help of two of my peers from my high school uh, with the goal of empowering women and minorities um, and allowing them to code, learn how to code in a welcoming environment. Do you think it'll go on beyond your stay at, at high school? Definitely. I'm planning to keep it running for uh, many, many years. That's excellent. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Princess Louise Siskel. Tell us about your research in space biology. Oh no, um, my friends are going to get out of, a kick out of this one. I actually kept my research at NASA a secret from them for six months until my mother spilled the secret, hopefully um, incidentally, but I'm not sure. Um, I, my research focused on uh, the reduced rate of drug metabolism in spaceflight. Um, so 
basically mice were sent into space and when they came back down we looked at epigenetic changes that had occurred. Okay, in layman's term, what does that even mean? <laughs> what happened to the mice? So drugs like acetaminophen, Tylenol, um, caffeine are all things that astronauts take. And so um, what happens is that in space flight, the rate at which they're metabolized, so the rate at which they're broken down is slowed way down. So we were trying to understand why that is. Um, and we found a few genes that were affected in space flight um, that we think might be the culprits. And so in the upcoming year, I'll continue my research at NASA trying to understand if that's true. <laughs> that's incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, Princess Lauren Bidalin. Hi, Lauren. Hello. You're lighting it up with that smile. <laughs> All right, here we go. You ready? What is the Reading Rocks program that you took part in at Hillsides or take part in? So the Reading Rocks program is a program that helps kids uh, learn how to read, break down words, and we do this thing called scooping, and that means taking apart the prefixes, suffixes, and the stem of the word, so they really understand what it is they're comprehending. And then explain what that means when you do it? Yes, exactly. Gotcha. All right, love it. Here we go. I'm told you might like to study linguistics and Latin uh, next year. Are you, are you familiar enough with Latin to say a sentence or something to the audience in Latin? Yes. Agnisho Voltus Rosa Gratum, which means welcome to the Rose Parade. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Princess Sherry Ma. I think we're generally familiar with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Tell us about the club that you founded. So I founded the Make-A-Wish Club back in my sophomore year, and it's an extension of the foundation. So what we do is we raise money, and at the end of the school year, we donate it all to grant the wishes of kids around the world with life-threatening illnesses. What's the best one you've been able to do? Well, earlier next, earlier last year, we were came up with a plan where we actually have two elementary schools in our community, and this year we plan to talk to those elementary schools and our middle school and our high school and have it to be an extra credit assignment for English teachers. For every letter to Santa, we can donate to the Macy's, and that is a dollar donated to Macy to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Love it, well done. Princess Michaela McElrath. I think I got your name right. McElrath. Yes. Yeah, your dad's a beefy guy. I don't want to make him mad. <laughs> By beefy, I mean strong. Don't, whatever, yeah, he's a big guy. Your mom raised you on Mexican love songs. Tell us about some of those songs. Ooh, my favorite Mexican artist is Selena Quintanilla, and I love her songs Como La Flor and Dreaming of You. What, what about them? They are absolutely beautiful, especially Dreaming of You. It's dedicated to her husband, which reminds me of my parents, and the love that she has for him, and just the passion that she shares with him. They work together, and she is such a strong, influential woman and serves in his, as an amazing example for me. That's a great answer. Which one of these seven amazing Young ladies is gonna be the 101st Rose Queen. There can only be one. Please allow me to welcome back Mr. Gerald Freeney. Ladies, would you please take a step forward? You ready? <laughs> From Sequoia High School. The 2019 Rose Queen is Louise Dresser Sicko. Queen Louise, as president of the Tournament of Roses, it is my privilege and honor to crown you as the 101st Rose Queen and to reign as the Rose Queen for the coming year. Thank you. <laughs> Hold it. Hold it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Queen Louise Sisko. I can't believe it. I'm so honored to have this opportunity to represent the city of Pasadena, the Tournament of Roses, and of course the seven or the six other highly accomplished, poised, and really brilliant young women on this court this year. I'm really excited for the upcoming three months. Improper methods of solid waste disposal can also generate water pollution, only to cause the destruction of an irreplaceable natural resource. Man can be his own worst enemy. If it's beautiful, novel, and easy to open, man will buy it. He gives no thought to the degradability of the packaging around his favorite consumer product. This plastic container will be unrotted, unrusted, totally unaffected, perhaps a million years from now.
what is our relationship to plastic and how can we change it. I'm using the very plastics that I'm drawing attention to. It really helps people to see unless we stop our use of plastic, this problem will just persist. I mean, there's, I don't know how many millions tons of plastic that are put into the ocean each year. It's, it's insane. Across all of the oceans of the world, there's this accumulation of plastics that get caught in the currents. And because they're buoyant um, and they're light, they get caught in the circular currents that are present. The plastic just churns and churns. It then is spat out onto the coast of Alaska. So places that are totally pristine are knee deep in plastic. There's islands where there's no people and there's tons of plastic all over all over the beach. So these are pack dogs that are made out of recycled plastics um, and lit with LEDs. I was really interested in the concept of a working animal and the way that animals are sort of tied in their relationship to humans is similar to the way that we humans are tied to our use of plastic. So it's kind of part of a whole series of works that I've been making called Unsustainable Creatures. Um, and so these particular works, the colors, I was really interested in researching the Aurora Borealis and making the colors of the dogs relate specifically to their environment. All types of people, when they see my work, first they see the animal, and so they're sort of drawn to the realism of the animal. And then they start to pick the pieces apart and they realize, oh, what the objects really are made from. And then they kind of, we get into a conversation about, you know, how can you stop using plastic, but also how can you reuse plastic? And so people become interested in just making additional use of the stuff that they have around the house. So it really kind of helps, you know, perpetuate through creativity a new kind of awareness of our relationship to the world, I think. We're here at the 2018 Pasadena Fall Festival, brought to you by the City of Pasadena's Human Services and Recreation Department. I would like to be in this contest because hopefully I win with the family and my family will be happy. Today we've been giving out bicycles that uh, participants could win through raffle by entering the fitness oh, yeah. zone. We have games and prizes. Also, the Tiny Tot Corral is a hit. We had an unbelievable day today. Fun games, prizes, the pony rides, the petting zoo, the big slide, the games, and more. Uh, some Kona ice and we've just been having all kinds of fun. We're so glad that the city of Pasadena puts on this event every year. We definitely make it a big part of our fall to come to the fall festival. My day was so good. I, I play basketball a lot of times and I play games and I won a lot, a lot of candy. This, this festival is really fun. They did a bunch of the free games over here. And I watched the um, shows over here when they were singing and dancing. My day was good today because I got to dance on the floor and eat a lots of candy. We had a great day today and today was really fun. This year we did a medieval theme. I'm a huntress. We have the princess here. We have our knight and we have our wizard and he's making magic as you can see. So hopefully you guys can join us next time at Pasadena Fall Festival at Victory Park. We are part of the Bat family here. Um, as you can see right here, here are my baby girls, Naya, who is uh, the bat toddler. This is Malia, the bat baby. And this is my wife, Autumn, uh, a bat woman. And I'm Batman, and so we're going to save Pasadena today. Happy Fall Festival from Pasadena. We just won the Family Costume Contest. We're Little Red Riding Hood, Grandma, the Wolf, and the Hunter. We also had an interactive day with the Sri Lanka Foundation. They came out and did their drums. The School of Rock joined us, which is located on Colorado Boulevard. 
Also, we had the costume contest for ages zero to three, four to seven, children that were 13 years and up, along with families. We've made sure that a lot of families left today happy with a smile on their face. And that's what the city of Pasadena's Human Services and Recreation Department is all about. And we'll see you next year for the 2019 Fall Festival from Victory Park. And we're out. All told, our Grand Marshal has won 10 Grammys and has been nominated for 22. She's an icon for a reason. She's every woman. There ain't nobody like her. The Grand Marshal for the 2019 Tournament of Roses Parade presented by Honda is Chaka Khan. <laughs> I just don't know where to go with this. I'm so honored. This is something so new and different for me. This is beautiful. This is like, so exotic. It's an exotic, beautiful place. So I, I can't think of a better, a better place for the Rose Bowl parade, you know, to, to come from. If, you, if it's always been Pasadena, it's a good thing. Patrias, we are celebrating the independence of 18 Latin American countries, including Mexico, Argentina, uh, the five countries from Central America, and others. Uh, and this is like the beginning of the months of the Latino heritage culture. Today we're going to have folklorico, we're going to have mariachi, we're going to have um, the coronation of the Queen of Fiestas Patrias. And uh, we have face paint, we have library, uh, we have uh, different activities for the children. The event has been going on for uh, more than 20 years. And um, we are part of the Human Service and Recreation Department who bring this cultural event for the community to embrace all the different cultures that we have in Pasadena. We usually have between 300 and 500 people who come. At the beginning it's kind of slow, but as soon as they, our community come back from work, they join us in this celebration. The importance is to teach our children from where their parents are come, uh, they came from to feel proud of their nationalities and to teach other countries that we are welcome people and uh, we get together and we celebrate as uh, we celebrate the 4th of July in America. <laughs>